Praise God. You know, the Bible tells us that in the latter days, people will call things that are good evil and things that are evil good. And it is happening right now, even in the body of Christ, so many call things that are evil good because they don't know the difference. That's why the body of Christ is sick. Hello? You know, if you think about it, when the Lord removed all the Jews from Egypt, every one of them was in good health. Every one of them left there. There wasn't any lame individuals. Amen? God wants to heal his children. He wants to deliver his children. He wants to position his children. The problem is that children don't have enough discernment to know what is good and what is evil, what is clean and what is unclean, what is holy and unholy. The Bible tells us that we are led astray by the desires of our own heart. That means we're fellowshipping with someone else. It's not the Holy Spirit. And we must have discernment of who we fellowship with. Amen? Hosea 4, 6. Read it with me. The people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Knowledge represents what? Truth. Truth. The Bible says that it's truth that sets us free. It's real simple. Truth sets us free. So who doesn't want you to know truth? Satan. Satan. And the kingdom of darkness. What they want you to do is go by fables. What they want you to do is go by reasoning. What they want you to do is go by what you believe, not what truth is. My people are destroyed for lack of truth. Let me share something with you. You were destroyed. Destroyed is a representation of decay. How are people being destroyed? Sickness disease. Amen? How else do other people die besides an accident? Right? They die of what? Sickness and disease. I mean, isn't, does everybody understand that? Everyone dies of sickness and disease. But you know we're not supposed to die of sickness and disease. We're supposed to know when it's time for us to go. Not by sickness and disease. We're, when the Holy Spirit lets you know it's time to come home, even Paul said, I know my time is short. I'm getting ready to go home. He let them know. Right? Some people are, are being murdered, aren't they, in death. But as a, a body of Christ, as a body of Christ, think about this. We're supposed to be the body of Christ. Was Christ sick? No. Did he die of sickness? No. No. Come on, think about this. Let this get in your spirit. He wasn't addicted to anything, was he? <laughs> Amen? He didn't fool with fornication. He didn't play no games. He was separated from the world, wasn't he? And, and he forgave and he took on sins man. I mean, man's sin. Right? Sins of man. Right. Why? Because he was a clean vessel. It's difficult to give something you haven't got. Amen? He was able to give everything because he had everything. His hands were clean. His heart was pure and so was his mind. But it says here, because also he came with all truth, didn't he? And great. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Right? Okay, Hosea 4, 6, My people are destroyed for lack of truth. Because you have rejected truth or knowledge, I will reject you from being priests for me. And because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. children. And we see that comes down the family line, doesn't it? Amen. So, destroyed is a representation of decay, representation of dis-ease. Now, we know that sickness is and diseases, infirmities, and so forth. Disease is any abnormality that affects the mind, the emotions, the flesh or body, and the spirit or heart. Let me say that again. A disease is any abnormality that affects the mind, the emotions, and the flesh. Also your spirit. Representation of your heart. And the heart is a character of your spirit, isn't it? So if your spirit gets contaminated, you've got problems, don't you? And let me share this with you. Whether you recognize this or you don't, it's still there. Does everybody understand that? Whether you know or you don't know, it's still there. So it's our responsibility to what? To know and remove it. Amen? It's our responsibility to remove it. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Hallelujah. You know, so many people get sickness and they don't even know they have it. Right? Yes. <laughs> Until it manifests in the natural. Yes. And we know that it's because something that was either inherited it's a representation of a curse, right? Because the devil tempts you, doesn't he? 
causes you to what? Sin, sin brings a curse, and curse brings judgment. Right? So we can see that sickness is a representation of judgment, isn't it? Do you think addiction is a representation of judgment? Amen. Amen. That's, well, there's three types of curses. Inherited curses, self-imposed curses, and temporary curses. <laughs> Come on, listen. Three types of curses. Inherited, self-imposed, and temporary. The Bible says if you don't touch anything unclean, right? Okay, so if you touch something unclean, you can get sick. When you touch someone that's sick, right, shake their hand, what do you do? You touch something unclean? If you don't clean your hands, you get sick, don't you? That'd be a temporary. Then we know that sin brings a self-imposing curse, isn't it? Now we know that there are inherited curses that come down the family line that we need to repent from and get loose from. That's what we were talking about last week in the teaching of shaking and loosing, right? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You know, the Lord puts boundary lines in our life so that we know whether to, how far we can go. We must walk in these boundary lines. If you walk out of the boundary line, you can get in trouble. We have a teaching, I think, on boundary lines too. <laughs> Spiritual boundaries or something like that? Okay. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 12. Read it with me. And we urge you, brethren to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in what? In love of their works for their work's sake. Be at peace. Um, hold on a minute. Be at peace among yourselves. First of all, you got to be at peace within. Then you got to maintain peace with everyone else. Be at peace among yourselves. If there's not the right peace there, you're associating with something different than the Holy Spirit. Be at peace among yourselves, right? Now, we know pride and so forth, puff people up and strife. If there's strife among yourself and among your brothers, something's not right. Be at peace among yourself. But if you're not peace with yourself, you're not peace with others. That's why we must, first of all, maintain our relationship with the Lord. In other words, we all must maintain getting right with God. Once we can get right with God, we can get right with ourselves. Once we can get right with ourselves, we can get right with others. Hello? Now we exhort you, brother, and warn those who are what? Unruly. Come on, read it with me. Comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. You see how that walks, how that, how, how that coordinates with one another. Render no evil for evil. You know how many times people want to do retaliation? If your heart goes into retaliation and you shake it off, you've already sinned. If you don't repent for it, the seed of sin is there manifesting. You've opened yourself to a demonic presence. That demon is in you then. Yeah, but you don't understand what they've done. Who told you that? You just opened the door for the devil. Yeah, but I need... You know how many times you want to retaliate? Let me tell you, you can murder with your tongue, can't you? You want to retaliate. Believe me, the spirit of criticism and gossip is rampant through the body of Christ. It brings division and strife. The problem is people are not recognizing that it's the presence of demonic activity. They think it's themselves. And it causes problems. So if you're a gossiper and you're looking, you're a criticizer, you have a demon. Real simple. You're rebellious and disobedient, you have a demon. If you still want to do, serve the world, you're an enemy of God. Real simple. Verse 16. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit. You know what? How many times do we quench the Spirit? Whoa. It's real easy to quench the Spirit sometimes, isn't it? Amen. You know what quenches the Spirit? Not your will, mine. Just a choice will quench the Spirit. Believe me, He'll just back right off and you can do whatever you want to do. The Holy Spirit leads. He's a gentleman. He doesn't push. He leads. He never pushes you. He always leads you. There's never stress and anxiety in the Spirit of God. There's always peace, joy, righteousness, and death to self. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> 
Do not quench the spirit. Do not what? Despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. You know how many times people... Let me share something here. If you can't... If you have a problem of holding attention, holding your mind, paying attention to something, that's the presence of a devil. What's he trying to do? Move you somewhere else? But see, if we don't recognize these things, we seem to want to just put up with it. Then the world calls it DDA and ADD or whatever. You can't do it. You know? <laughs> they, call, they label it bipolar, schizophrenia. They got all kinds of secular labels for presence of demonic activity. Then what they do is try to medicate the curse. <laughs> Hello? And we must learn to separate ourselves, and that's the name of this teaching, separation. <laughs> we must learn to separate ourselves from the sin, from the sicknesses, and from the curses. Hello? Is everybody all right? Amen. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise prophecies. But don't chase them. <laughs> Man, the word, Lord gave me a word 20 years ago and I'm still chasing it. That's wonderful. <laughs> I just lost my family and my job because I'm chasing that word. I know God's going to fulfill it. No, He's not. If you're not faithful with a little... You're not going to get any more. Hello? Anything more that comes is not God. And what He does is push you out of position. Then you start on a whole other path. Oh, Lord is blessing me. That ain't the Lord. Watch. Eventually the rug will come from underneath your feet. What He does is like somebody who's going bass fishing. Right? He uses a shiner. You bite the bait. You think you got stuff here. Yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, you go build a family, do this, do that. And then, but that bait is still in your mouth. That hook is still there. Eventually, he pulls it back. And next thing you know, you're in your cycle again. <laughs> Hello? Abstain from every what? Form of evil. Do you know that sin is evil? Do you know that fear is evil? Do you know that worry is evil? Do you know that hatred is evil? Do you know that rebellion is evil? Disrespect is evil. Ungodliness is evil. Rejecting the counsel of the Lord is evil. See, we, we get so accustomed, we've candy coated what evil is vengeance is evil retaliation is evil unforgiveness is evil we must begin to learn ourselves learn to separate ourselves from evil which is the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light pride is evil, 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 evil. <laughs> really? Oh, so you don't like to get your foot stepped on. You're not willing to receive counsel. You got a bad attitude towards brothers. Nobody can say anything or walk around you because you have eggshells. Afraid you're going to go off again. That's evil! Evil. Whoo! Verse 23. Now verse 22. Read it with me again. Abstain from every form of evil. Why? Because it's the kingdom of darkness. And verse 23. Now may the God of peace Himself what? Sanctify you completely. You can never be sanctified completely until you learn how to separate yourself from evil. 
And may your whole what? Spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful who will also do it. Wow. I got a little kid. These are like the do's and don'ts, you know. <laughs> One, there's three of them. Submit, love, and peace with yourself and others. Three of them. Three categories. Number one, submit, love. In other words, submit to God. Love others, including yourself. And have peace with yourself and others. Submit to God. Love. The Bible says love your neighbor, right? People who are in the world, they used to say, love your neighbor, but don't get caught. Hello? Now it's love your neighbor. Amen? Number two. Render no evil. Pursue what is good for yourself and others. And rejoice always. Render no evil. Pursue what is good for yourself and others. And rejoice always. Render no evil. Pursue what is good for yourself and others. And rejoice always. Number three. Give thanks. Test all things. And abstain from every form of evil. Give thanks, test all things, and abstain from every form of evil. We need to print that everywhere. Abstain from every form of evil. <laughs> Why? So God can sanctify or separate us completely. So we can be separated completely, sanctified. Our spirit, soul, and body. In other words, being blameless or healthy. Blameless is a representation of healthy. In all areas. The answer is learning how to separate. Learning how to separate. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Hallelujah. You know, it's amazing that when um, we're willing to say real quick, when somebody hands us something, we can say, that's not mine. That's not mine. But in se we're learning how to separate you have to start saying, that's not mine. <laughs> Is everybody with me? In other words, when somebody tries to hand you something that's not yours, right? You'll say, that's not mine. The problem, the powers of darkness want you to think that sin, curse, sicknesses, and diseases are yours. Addictions are yours. They're yours. <laughs> Hello? So we put up with it, and then what we do is we medicate the curse. Oh, hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 6. You know, they got all kinds of medications now for addictions. They, they say that they bring you from addiction to dependency. And they call it success. So take this pill. You won't drink. You'll just throw up. You know. <laughs> take this pill. You won't have any desires for 
drugs or cocaine or heroin. Look at they put methadone in, right? And it's harder to get off the methadone than the heroin. The withdrawals are worse. Oh, hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Is everybody there? In verse 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with what? Idols. Idols. For you are the living temple of God, as God has said. So what agreement do we have? What, what right should we have to accept something that's not ours? <laughs> God, people are deceived. What's Satan's greatest weapon? Deception. What's his power? Fear. So when you fear, you that's sin, isn't it? Are you willing to accept it after you repent? Or are you willing to keep it? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God as God has said, I will dwell in them and I will walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, which means if you'll do this, if you'll come out from among them, them mean world, and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you and I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us what? Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of reverence to God. So he's saying, come out from among them. Come out from the worldly system. One of the worldly systems is wisdom that we must be careful of. Turn to James 3. See, we must discern or learn how to separate from worldly system. James chapter 3. Now, worldly wisdom is self-seeking. Hello? Worldly wisdom is self-seeking. I mean, most of the people are trying to... Scientists and stuff are trying to break through things, right? I mean, look what happens after uh, some of these scientists that are building bombs for terrorists. What are they doing? They're self-seeking. Some people are trying to get a label. They're working so hard to try and get a label, like a Nobel Peace Prize or whatever. And I'm not saying all of them are. But the, the world likes to put labels on people. Amen? We've already been sealed. <laughs> we don't need labels. <laughs> Hallelujah. James 3 and verse 13. Would you read it with me, please? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Wow. Not in pridefulness, but in meekness of wisdom. But if you have what? Bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. You know how many people exaggerate and lie? That's sin, isn't it? Amen. You know how many people lie and exaggerate and don't even know it? <laughs> Hello? You know what they're trying to do? Protect themselves. They're trying to protect themselves. And the strong man of pride is there. That's a presence of evil. It's evil, isn't it? This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. Demonic. <laughs> there it is. He told us. You've got to be careful. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. For wherever envy and self-seeking exist, how you know many people want to be known? I mean, I run into a lot of people. Hi, I'm a prophet. Hi, I'm this. Hi, I'm that. And they want to exalt their positions. 
instead of Christ. Hi, I, I'm a such and such denomination. That wisdom is not from my Father. That wisdom is not from my Father. It's demonic. You have to be careful of revelations you get and make sure that they're the revelations of the Holy Spirit. Because the unholy spirit would love to give you revelations so that you become self-seeking. Amen? Confusion and everything, every evil thing are there then. Envy and strife. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure. Pure. Pure and what? Come on, read it with me. It's in front of you. Then what? Peaceable. Gentle. Willing to what? Yield means willing to submit. Willing to receive counsel, correction, and direction. Full of what? Mercy and what? Good fruits. Without what? Partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in what? Peace by those who make peace. Glory to God. So we got to be careful. Right? Because see, worldly wisdom is demonic. And we must discern between the wisdom of the Spirit and the wisdom of the world. Now who's the ruler of the world? Amen. Satan. Go to John 14. John 14. Oh, hallelujah. Let me share something with you. I, there's so many times I talk with people about, <clears throat> um, you know, sowing into the kingdom and so forth, tithing and, uh, you know, things that God expects us to do. Believe me, the devil is going to come up to you and try and give you worldly reasoning. Isn't he? He's going to try and give you worldly reasoning. What's he going to do? He's going to put fear on you. Fear causes you to trust in your own strength. And it's sin. It's evil. The Bible says that it's no longer our life. It's not our life anymore. It's His life. We want to get to a position where we can say it's no longer I that live, but He that lives within me. Amen? <laughs> and John 14, verse... 29. And now I have told you before it comes, and when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise and let us go from here. In other words, let us go forward. Amen? So the ruler of the world is who? Satan. That's known as the kingdom of darkness. So many people don't discern the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And we must be able to separate the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. Um, go to 2 Corinthians 4. So the ruler of the world is known as the kingdom of darkness, right? The kingdom of this world is darkness. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> you know what the welfare lines are? They're the blessing of Satan. Hello? And what happens is when people grow up with a welfare mentality and they never come out of the spirit of bondage. They can never go any further because they're bound to that. It's inherited. Spirit of bondage. Spirit of poverty. They're bound to the spirit of poverty. Does everybody understand that? And 
And it got quiet in here. Is everybody all right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Where I say to go? Second Corinthians 4? Okay. Praise God. Verse 3. But even if our gospel or truth is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? Decaying. Why? Because they don't have the truth, right? <laughs> Whose minds the God of this age has what? Blinded. His, his weapon is what? Deception. Who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God should shine on them. Powerful. Powerful. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have these this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Oh, worldly wisdom. Christ wisdom. Worldly kingdom. The kingdom of God. It's our responsibility to discern and separate. To discern and separate. Go to Matthew 4. Hallelujah. Separation. Matthew chapter 4. You know, you got to ask yourself sometime, am I putting on one face and I'm putting on another face? called prefabricated personalities. <laughs> it's sin. And it's evil. And there's a presence of demonic activity there, activity there when you have to prefabricate your personality. When you're like someone in front of people and you're another person behind closed doors. There's a presence of demonic activity there. And it's evil. Matthew chapter 4, verse 12. Did I say that already? Praise God. Now when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the regions of Zubalim and Naphtali, Naphtali, and that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zubalim and the land of Naphtali, Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region in the shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Or the kingdom of light. So we understand that repentance is a representation of the kingdom of heaven, isn't it? We must repent. Remember, the blood always goes before the Spirit. The blood always goes before the Spirit. So when you and I begin to touch on clean things and whatever it may be, when we begin to manifest a wrong attitude, when we begin to criticize and have unruly thoughts, that's the kingdom of darkness manifesting, isn't it? If you're not willing to receive counsel, correction, and direction, 
if you can't talk to someone without a, a reverse attitude or anger, that's the presence of demonic activity. You are heeding to darkness. And the kingdom of light is not manifesting. And we must be able to separate ourselves from these things and say, it's not mine. Hello? Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's not mine. Let me share something with you. I was in my room at the, at the hotel. And, uh, <clears throat> and I was having a hard time sleeping. You know, I thought, well, you know, maybe certain things were happening. So I pray. I... I, I, I it was like fear and lust kept showing up. And I kept commanding those things to lead. And then I'd watch a little bit of news to see what was happening, turn it off, go to sleep, and I would, I'd be light sleeping. And so this went on for a few days. And finally I was like, Lord, what's going on, man? I mean, I'm constantly having to struggle with this. And it doesn't, I don't, I'm not struggling with it until I get in my room. <laughs> And I'm going, is there an accursed item in this place? So I, uh, I lay down. And I, and again, that spirit of loss and the spirit of fear showed up. I commanded them to leave. I tried to lay down again, and all of a sudden I heard, why don't you start packing for tomorrow? Because we were getting ready. We we're going to leave in the morning. And I said, all right. So I uh, got up and threw some clothes out of I started opening some of the drawers and I pulled out some clothes. And the one drawer was stuck. Like, you know, maybe some clothes got behind it. And I thought, you know, this wasn't like this when I came, when we first, when I first came here. And I realized that my air conditioner was different when I got in the room. And I and I shared with Larry, I said, man, you know, something's, I wonder if somebody's been in my room. So anyways, um, so I, I was, struggling with this one drawer so I said well I'm going to pop this drawer out and see if any of my clothes are underneath it when I popped the drawer and pulled it out there was a porno book in there I thought first of all I thought okay I got to get rid of this thing <laughs> and I said thank you Lord for showing me so I pulled out one of these plastic bags that was in the garbage can but it was clear I'm going oh Lord please Where's a, where's a dumpster? Don't let anybody see me leave this room with this book. <laughs> I'm going, no, this can't happen to me. So I'm like, oh. So I'm, out, I'm walking out with my shorts on. You know, it's, it's about 11 o'clock at night, you know. And, uh, and I'm, I, walk, I said, please leave me to a dumpster. Because I didn't remember seeing anything around there. And I, I got this book underneath my arm because you could see right through the plastic, you know. So I, I go outside the door, and I'm, I'm walking down, and I'm going, oh, Lord, don't let anybody see me. I'm thinking, what would I say? And I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to trust in you, Lord. I'm not going to try and make any excuses why I have this book underneath my arm. <laughs> so I, I, I go down, and I'm walking halfway down the hall. Finally, there's a garbage can there. I'm like, thank you. I threw that thing in that garbage can, and I walked away. And I said, thank you, Lord. Shook the dust off, dust off, got back in my room, and I commanded those things to leave, and they were gone. Hello? You know, it was evil. It was evil. The kingdom of darkness was trying to attack me. And I personally believe that somebody put that there. Amen. I personally believe that. Because that drawer was not like that. I'd opened that drawer many times and it was never difficult. Accursed items. You know how many people don't know about accursed items? They think, oh, well, you know. Well, I still hold on to my old girlfriend's picture. We're going to get together someday. Get rid of it. It's an accursed item. 
you open the door to the spirit of lust and it's evil. Amen. If you're concerned about tomorrow, it's sin. It's evil. And the kingdom of darkness is manifesting and heaven is away with you. Hallelujah. Is everybody all right? Amen. Hey, 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 hold on a second. Praise God. Where do I say to go? Thank you, somebody. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 3. And verse 17. Read it with me. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Or freedom. Freedom. Right? But we all with unveiled face, beholding as a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, turn to Second Corinthians 13. For Second Corinthians 13. I want to read this one verse. Verse 5. Read it with me. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? Wow. See, Unless we learn to separate ourselves and not and start saying, that's not mine, because you're a child of the Most High God. Anything from the kingdom of darkness doesn't belong to you unless you allow it. That's not mine. Bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness. That's not yours. Hatred. Retaliation. Those things are all sin. They're not yours. And we must learn to separate ourselves. But you can't get rid of it until you repent. Because you've already touched and agreed with it. And that's a whole other teaching. John 10. If you're doing a lot of button, <laughs> but, 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 you better be careful. Quit bucking and start bowing, right? Yeah, but it's called, then you're associating with the spirit of reason. And he's a deceptive spirit. Jesus says, make your yeses be yeses and your noes noes. Amen? Anything beyond that is the devil. You know, we take that for granted even though the Word says it. Well, what the devil wants you to say, oh, that's not the devil. But it is. You know, the Word says He's the most cunning beast, right? He's the most subtle one. You don't even know He's associating with you until your fruits begin to manifest and somebody's got to tell you about them because you're deceived and don't even know you're manifesting the fruits of evil presence. Amen? John 10, verse 7. Then Jesus said to them, Again, most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. The sheep didn't hear the voice of the stranger. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to what? Steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Wow. So he came to steal, kill, and destroy. He replaced stealing with sin. He replaced killing with a curse. And he placed with destruction with judgment. Ooh. You want to hear that again? 
He replaced stealing with sin, killing with a curse, and destroying with judgment. So the devil came to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. He came to bring sin, a curse, and judgment. Go to verse 25 while we're here. Verse 25. John 10, verse 25. Jesus answered him, I told you, and you do not believe, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they what? Follow me. Wow. So you're either his goat or his sheep. Amen? So we must discern... What is the voice of the Lord and what is not? And the devil does not come to you as, Hi, I'm the devil. I'm here to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to you in the imitation of the Holy Spirit. 1 Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Paul said that when he sinned, he realized that evil was present in his members. Wow. See, so from now on you can say, that's not mine. That sickness, that disease, that sin is not mine. You're repenting, get rid of it. We'll talk about that later, but I'll let you. 1 Thessalonians, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, thank you. Verse 1, Now the Spirit expressly says, In a later time some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Every demonic spirit is deceiving. There isn't a specific one that's not deceiving. They do not tell the truth. <laughs> Hello? You could ask them if they're the Holy Spirit and you know what they're going to say? Yes. <laughs> you can ask them if, if they believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh and you know what they're going to say? Yes. Oh. They lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. Deceiving spirits bring what? Doctrines of what? Demons. What a deceiving spirit brings the kingdom of darkness. Eve thought she was talking to somebody cool. She did not separate the kingdom of light from the kingdom of darkness. Even when he when the Satan the serpent called God a liar. She just shrugged that aside because of her desire to want that fruit. <laughs> he kept telling her, man, it's good stuff. But you can't take one bite. You know? She just shrugged that aside. Oh, hallelujah. So deceiving spirits bring doctrines of demons. We must learn to separate that. Go to 1 John 5. Hallelujah. 1 John 5. you got to say, that's not mine, man. Hey, that's not mine. I'm a child of the king. That's not mine. Once an addict, always an addict. That ain't mine, man. That's not mine. <laughs> 1 John chapter 5 and verse 16. 
If anyone sees his brother sinning, a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask. And he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. In other words, if you see a brother goofing up not leading to death, pray for him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Ask that the Lord would intercede. You know. Therefore, there, oh, there is sin leading to death. I don't say that he should pray about that Man, you better go tell him. Hello? Amen. Oh, Lord, rescue my brother that's leading sin leading to death. The Lord's going, bonehead. Go rescue him yourself. Go tell him. All, righteous, all, all unrighteousness is what? Sin. And there is sin not leading to death. But we know that there is sin leading to death. Those are uncurable diseases. Hello? Sin leading to death. You know what happens with sin leading to death? Broken covenant. Many of us had sin leading to death, didn't we? It's not yours anymore if you repented. <laughs> that ain't mine. We're trying to medicate the curse. Get rid of it. <laughs> Don't put a bowl around it. <laughs> Sin leading to death. You know what we have to do? Walk it out. we got to begin to walk it out, man. we got to get rid of these idols. Every time the devil tries to put an idol in front of you, that's not mine. you got to walk it out. Look at Hebrews 10 says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And don't let the, tell, the devil tell you that Satan doesn't bless his people. Did you all know that, that, that Satan's a rock star? Yeah. yeah, he was close with all the stones, right? And he was known as what? Morning star, right? He was a rock star. <laughs> Hello? He blesses all of his rock stars, doesn't he? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> he blesses those who are willing to serve them. He blesses those in the kingdom of darkness. And then he lies to them. He pulls the rug underneath their feet. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 10, and verse 26. Is everybody there? Amen. For if we willfully, if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, is everybody there? Come on, read it with me. For if we sin willfully after we, we have received the knowledge of the truth, there are no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. That's broken covenant. There, you are open door. When you break covenant with God, you die, you go to hell. There is no sacrifice to keep you from hell. But a certain fearful expectation of what? Judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you suppose will be he who thought worthy, who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sacrificed a common thing and insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord, and again, the Lord will judge His people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Sheesh. That disqualifies one saved, always saved. The only, why pe the only reason why people argue, argue that point is because they still want to sin. Broken covenant brings a Judgment, doesn't it? 
Go to Hebrews 4. While we're in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4. And verse 11. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 11. Hallelujah. Everybody all right? Amen. You know, on the back of bumper stickers it says, just say no. You can, that's not mine. <laughs> that's not mine. That's not mine, man. <laughs> and then walk it out. That ain't mine. <laughs> Let us therefore be diligent to enter to re the rest. In other words, peace. Lest anyone fall according to the same example of what? Disobedience. Believe me, if you're disobedient to the Holy Spirit, you don't have peace. Amen. Amen. You may think you do, but everybody else around you is going to tell you you don't. For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul, which is the mind, will, and emotions, and the spirit, and the joints and marrow, which represents the what? Body. And a discerner of the thoughts. And intents of the heart. Wow. Discerner of the thoughts. So that's why it's important for you and I to be able to utilize the Word of God to discern what thoughts are ours and what you're not. So when these other thoughts are coming, you can say, that's not mine. That's not mine. That thought of criticism is not mine. Go. That thought of rejection, oh, that thought of self-pity, woe is me, boo-boo. <laughs> Nobody loves me. That's not yours. Who told you that? What about your father that loves you, who paid the price for you, who died on the cross for you? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Well, that was for everybody else. <laughs> Come out. <laughs> That's not mine. Amen? That's not mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 7. Glory to God. And verse 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 8. Paul wrote a letter of correction. He said, For even if I made you sorry, or sorrow, sorry with my letter, I did not regret it. I love Paul. He's right to the point. <laughs> Listen, even though I made you sorry, I didn't regret it. There was a purpose of it. I did not regret it, though I did it, though I did regret it. In other words, he had to do it, but he didn't really want to do it, you know? For I perceived that the same epistle made you sorry, though only for a while. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. For you were made sorry in godly manner that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, not to be regretted. In other words, you're willing to humble yourself. But sorrow of the world produces death. You know how many people are sorrow of the world? Oh, I lost my job. I lost my family. I lost this. I lost my car. I lost. Well, maybe I'll take this. And then you get caught. Oh, I'm sorrow. I'm in sorrow. I got caught. Oh, man, I got caught. Oh, Lord, help me. Again. 
So we see worldly sorrow produces death because there really is no repentance in worldly sorrow. The only thing that they're trying to do is get back what they lost. Hello? That's not you. Second Corinthians 4. Worldly sorrow produces death. Godly sorrow produces life. Second Corinthians chapter 4 uh, and verse 16. <clears throat> Therefore we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So you light affliction. So you got counsel, correction, and direction. You got chastised by the Lord. You did something you shouldn't have done. You said something. You thought something. You repented. Okay. We call it affliction. Amen? So you got sick. Okay. So you busted your toe or you bumped your head. Whatever. Okay, you got affliction. It's only but for what? For a moment. A moment in the eyes of God. It's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So whatever you're going through, it's just a light affliction. Yeah, but... Uh-uh. No butt ministry. No button around, man. We are the head, not the tail. Well, we do not look at the things that which are what? Seen. But at the things which are what? Not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Oh, man, you know how many people are willing to die for temporary? For the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. Now, this is powerful because Satan's kingdom is temporary. And everyone in it is temporary. But God's kingdom is eternal. And we must learn to separate the eternal from the temporary. So as you get to get caught up in your jobs, and you get caught up in finances, and worry of this and worry of that, and how am I going to feed this, and uh, you know, my children this, and my wife this, and my girlfriend that, and my ex-wife this, and my ex-husband, and whatever it is, it's all temporary. Don't get caught up in it. They caught up in the eternal. Now, so now the temporary kingdom is not yours. The eternal kingdom is. Yeah, but don't go there again. Don't go there again. Stay in the eternal realm. Right? Go to Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 38. Oh, let's start at verse 37. Hallelujah. <laughs> but let your what? Yes. yes be yes, and your no be no, for whatever is more than these is from the what? Evil one. Evil one. So I wanted to prove what was spoken here. Have you heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? We'd all be blindless and toothless. But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. Why? It's more, th these are things that are temporary. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. 
But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun shine, rise on the evil and on the good. And sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brother only, what do you do more than the others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Hmm. That means we got to walk it out, man. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter two. You know, we lose sight. The Bible says he who wants to save his life will lose it. Right? And he who loses his life will save it. You know, I can't tell you that you know when the Holy Spirit was ministering to me the other day about uh, uh, when the uh, the scripture says about the woman that had all of these husbands and they died and then the, they, they asked Jesus well then who she married to in heaven and Jesus said don't you get it they're not like that anymore it's a whole new life They're like angels. It's a whole new life. They're not married anymore. It's a whole new life. This whole life that you and I are leave, living right now is temporary. There's a life that's coming that is eternal and it's not like this one. But yet we want to hold on to this life. And the life that is awaiting for us is glorious and awesome. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So only the Spirit of God is going to let you know that. So whoever you're associating with, you'll know the things. You'll have peace. You'll know the things that are freely given by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches what? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That means we must learn how to separate. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually what? Discern. We must learn how to separate. And it's a walkout. You must walk it. It's not going to happen instantaneously. It's, an, it's a life walk. Everybody get it? You're not going to come through a program for nine months and expect to have it all. Hello? It's a life walk, and the life walk is learning to separate what's yours and what's not yours. What's yours is the kingdom of God. What's not yours is the kingdom of Satan. Unless you want it. 1 Peter chapter 5. That's why the Bible says if you're still striving and all of these other things, you've not learned Christ. Right? First Peter chapter 5. Glory. Verse 6, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time and not you. Casting all your care upon Him for He cares for you. Quit trying to fix it. and Quit trying to fix others. Amen? Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. Seeking whom he can deceive. 
seeking. He's looking for someone willing to bite the bait. He's looking for someone willing to compromise and accept his kingdom. It says, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Everyone goes through it. But we must get to that place. We're not willing to accept that this sickness, that this thought, that this problem that you're going through is yours. It's not mine. I am not going to accept it. I'm going to separate this low self-esteem. It's not mine. Always ask yourself, who told you that? Who's trying to lead you into another path? Who's trying to bring fear and worry on you? Who's trying to bring anxiety and stress on you? It's not yours. But you can accept it if you want then the kingdom of darkness is manifesting in you. Do you want to be labeled by the world or labeled by God? Amen? <laughs> Some of us need to repent and break off. Repent for accepting the labels of the world. Yes. We need to repent for accepting the labels of the world. Amen? And break and sever it from us. But may the God of all grace who called us to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while. Hello? Sometimes suffering finally wakes us up. Many of us had to suffer before we looked up. <laughs> after you have suffered for a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and what? Settle you. If you're not settled, you're associating with the kingdom of darkness. We must... It talks about resist, right? Listen, we must have, maintain this relationship with the Lord. If you're maintaining a relationship with the Lord, there's things you're going to be able to do. You're going to be able to resist. You're going to be able to recognize. You're going to be able to take responsibility. You're going to be able to repent. You're going to be able to break the powers off of yourself. You're going to be able to remove it from yourself. And you're going to be able to rejoice in the victory. Do I need to repeat those? If you maintain that relationship with the Lord, okay, you're going to be able to resist. You're going to be able to recognize. You're going to be able to take responsibility. And don't you think you need to take responsibility? One of the responsibilities you need to do then the next thing is repent. <laughs> Hello? then you're going to be able to renounce which is known as breaking the power off of you. After you repent and you sever yourself from it, I break that off of me in the name of Jesus. All those words that were spoken over my life, I break that off of me in the name of Jesus. All the labels that I've been labeled with, I'm not accepting them. I break them off of me in the name of Jesus. But you first must take your responsibility and repent for accepting them at one time. Nothing can go unless the blood goes first. See, people are out going, I break that off of me when it can't be broken because repentance wasn't before it. So renounce represents re break it. Then you remove it from you. And then you rejoice in the victory. So, do I have to say it again? Praise God. Get the tape. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to close at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Relationship, resist, recognize, take responsibility, repent, renounce, remove it from you, and rejoice. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Yeah, but everybody else does it. Whoa. Being a man pleaser. Hello? Being a man pleaser and falling into sin is sin. Yes. Everybody got it? 
being a God pleaser is righteousness. Don't be so concerned about what man has to say about you. Of course, unless they're revealing your stinky fruit, then you better be concerned. What you want is a blessing from the Lord where he says, this is my child in whom I am well pleased. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Read it with me. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Now, wait a minute, man. If you're new, then why are you still accepting the things from the old? They're not yours. Old things have what? Passed away. Well, man, old thoughts, old garbage. Old, it doesn't mean that some, you're not going to be tempted. Temptation is not sin. It's accepting that temptation is sin. So you must recognize the temptation, right? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. Glory to God. No fables, no theories, no reasoning. Truth is what makes us free. Truth. And learning how to separate truth and lies, deceptions, walking it out, going through it, resisting and recognizing it, taking responsibility and repenting, renouncing it, right? Removing it and rejoicing. Praise God. Let's do it. Let's do it. Father, we thank you for your word. You sent your word to heal our diseases in mind, in soul, in spirit, and in body. Lord, we repent for accepting all the lies of darkness. We repent in the name of Jesus. We renounce it and break and sever it from us in the name of Jesus. They're not ours. And we receive your healing resurrection power. We receive your peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. We receive the things from you that by your stripes we're healed, that no weapon formed against us can prosper, and that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Not only do we receive it, we accept it, and we separate ourselves from the lies of the devil in the kingdom of darkness. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen and Hallelujah.